Welcome back to another episode of FS Detail Garage. We're going to pull out the uh, gauge cluster here on the E30, and we're going to put the IS cluster in here, as well as this cluster started having some uh, issues with the uh, tack jumping around. So first and foremost, before we even put the IS cluster in here, we're going to try to kind of figure out what was going on with the uh, ETA cluster. So start with, we're going to have to remove the uh, kick panel down here. Mine's been pretty butchered from... Uh, previous owners over the years but at least things still intact I guess so we're gonna um, remove that and then uh, we will have access to uh, these uh, bolts behind here to remove this plate and so on so we'll continue to go out of here okay so we dropped the uh, kick panel um, if you get the, all the screws out this piece connects to the uh, steering shaft here so if you can't get it down you just have to pull that clip out as well as on the Eta, this piece here connects right into here so just pop that out and then the entire kick panel comes out okay so now the uh, panel right below the cluster you have these little deals here that you have to unscrew there's one on each side of the uh, a little more difficult to see right there yeah, my fingers touching point there so you gotta thread those off okay so then once you remove those you can pull this piece off and you're actually gonna have to remove the steering wheel so don't get all excited thinking oh that's all we gotta do we still got some more stuff to do i got my little helper here say hi nikki what are we doing? Are we fixing your car? Fixing your car. Okay. Okay, so now we have to remove the uh, emblem out of the steering wheel. Just take a flat head and ever so carefully. Yeah. Be so. Be so. A little bit difficult with one hand. There we go. And here we go. And be so and be Now we have our nut in there, which is going to be a 22 millimeter. And uh, that is pretty much the only thing holding that in there. So, and the bottom piece. But that's what you got to get popped out of there. So. All right, so now we have access to the steering wheel nut. This is uh, a 22 millimeter or a 7 eighths if you have standard. I'm just gonna take a uh, impact here and we're gonna get this thing off. There we go. That scared you? Yeah. <laughs> Too bright on the kid. All right, so key has to be in the ignition to the uh, on position. Then the steering wheel will be allowed to slide off. Once the steering wheel is slid off, now you can see you have a ton of room to get this cluster out of here. So that is key. Do not attempt to yank that thing out of here with the wheel on. If you get it out of there, I'd be quite surprised. Okay, so now we have to remove the uh, gauge bezel. That's going to be one screw two screws, three screws, four screws, five screws, and six screws in total. I'm getting really, really thirsty here. Huh? <laughs> All right, now we can pull the uh, gauge bezel now that we have all the uh, screws out. So just kind of wiggle her out of there. Some of them might be stuck in there pretty good if the cluster has never come out. see that's what it looks like once we uh, get these out the cluster comes all the way out 
So you can see why you pretty much have to have the steering wheel off because these tabs are very, very fragile and actually on the IS one from it being in my garage so many times and sitting around, it has actually broken off one of the ears already. So you gotta be really, really careful because that's actually what's really, really holding this thing in here straight. So um, if you don't take the wheel off, more than likely you're gonna break those off of there. So I wouldn't be surprised if you got it out of here with the wheel on, but I would certainly be surprised if you got it out of here with the wheel on intact. Let me rephrase what I said earlier. So let's get those out of here. Actually, that screwdriver is a bit too long. I hear you, buddy. So now, be very, very careful. So I'm actually going to get off of the camera here to pop these pieces loose so I can use both hands. Um, but we're ultimately going to get our fingers behind here and pull down on both sides and the cluster is going to kind of fold out like this. I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly or it goes the other direction, but I'm pretty sure it kind of tilts forward and comes out. So we'll see here. Okay, so yeah, just like what I suspected and I remembered the uh, comes out like this. I wanted to stop right as I was pulling it out. Um, if your dad, my dash is slightly cracked, so it's kind of, I got a slight sag, I guess, if you will, is also um, things have kind of shrunk over the years. So I did have to slightly pry up here to get this to pull out. But once you do that, the uh, cluster is pretty much out. So you can grab it with both hands and start wiggling it out from here. And then the cluster won't come all the way out because it's connected by uh, connectors back there. So um, you'll just reach right behind and you'll unplug them. I'll show you that here in a second. And then once you get it folded over forwards here, you have one clip here. You're gonna have a wire going into the green box or depending upon what you year, you may have another wire going into that. Then you're gonna have the yellow clip in the center and then the blue clip here. And then there's another uh, light that is uh, wired in solely itself right there. You can see the two wires going in. These black clips just raise right up and that allows these um, to pop right out. <clears throat> you cannot remove them without popping those clips up. So keep that in mind. So now the cluster is all the way out. Still got the uh, tabs intact. And like I said, there's gonna be this one wire here and depending upon your model, probably gonna be plugged in in a different uh, position, not 100% on that. So uh, be mindful of where that is unplugged from. Okay, so we have the IS cluster, and like I told you, my IS cluster got one of the clips broken from being uh, banged around the garage so much. So uh, same uh, installation, remember to keep an uh, eye of where that plug actually connects to, because there's a couple of them that can. Uh, snap your white one in, your yellow one here, your uh, ABS light plugs right in, and then your, uh, your blue uh, connector here. Once we do that, we are good to push this sucker back into place. And again, keeping very careful of that arm, since I now only have one to mount this thing in with. So I'm actually gonna get off the camera here so I can uh, put this in here. Man, I should correct this. And maybe one day we'll do a, a video on getting the swirling out of the, uh, <laughs> the plastic here. It's pretty bad. Okay, so we got our arm mounted here. Stuck my screw back in there so I don't lose it if I want to put the edit cluster back in. So now we're ready to put the bezel on and uh, it does actually get mounted here and uh, through with these other bolts once the, or screws, once the bezel gets mounted in here. So I mean, I guess it'll be kind of held in. So let's get the bezel in there. The bezel back in, we're uh, ready to put the uh, steering wheel back on or the uh, fascia piece here. Um, kind of whatever you want to do at this point. I'll probably actually just do the fascia piece right now since I'll have a little more room. Then we can reinstall the wheel. And if you're wondering why you needed the key in here to uh, remove the steering wheel, watch this when the key moves. Then when the key comes out, locks it. So that's how your steering wheel actually locks into place. And then also, 
Hopefully when you took this off, I forgot to mention, you want to leave a little drift pin mark on the actual steering shaft and then on the inside of the wheel. Um, I didn't 100% actually do that on this car. If I have to pull the wheel back off to uh, get it straight, I will. It's relatively simple, but uh, easy thing. Put a scribe here and a scribe there, then you know right where your wheel came off. We do know the wheel was in basically this position when we took it off anyways, so we're gonna be pretty darn close within a tooth or so. So if we're a tooth off, we'll just undo it and move it over a tooth, pretty simple. So now, put on your washer and your nut here. And I'm not gonna advise anybody to do this, but I am going to take the impact on low and just run her down. Now I will go get a uh, ratchet and we will suck this thing down. So the real way to do this is, uh, you see me doing it here. Probably run it down with an impact, but not the smartest thing. Just make sure your steering wheel is nice and tight since we're reusing a uh, locking nut. And I hold no responsibility for you putting on the original nut and not buying a new nut. I would recommend everybody to buy a new nut. So again, I am not held responsible for you using a faulty reused nut. That is on you. Go to the dealer and buy a new one. All right, now slam in your emblem. Bam, congratulations, you guys just put a cluster in a car. Not too uh, bad of work, but I uh, just gotta be careful because again, we're dealing with aged plastics. But uh, there you go, congratulations, you guys. Stay tuned for episodes of FS Detail Garage. We'll be doing some more random stuff. Not sure what we'll do, but as stuff starts breaking or needs repair, you know I'll be showing you how to do it. Have a good night, y'all. Thank you for watching.